Hello, bonjour everybody. Today we'll talk about Flames of War. It's a World War II miniature game, so it's a tabletop game. And we're going to build two Ornis tank hunter platoon. It's one of the dead, deadliest uh, tank hunter you can find in the game if you don't count the Ferdinand on top of it or the Yak Tiger. <clears throat> so the Ornis, great gun, big firepowers, but pretty much weak armor on that vehicle. So anyway, it is the scale of 1100, 15 mm. It's a German unit for mid-war, the Ornis tank on the platoon. On the bottom you can see it's a kit GBX130. In the back they tell you there's two Ornis tank hunter, one unit card, it goes with the Ghost Panzer uh, level 1943 basically of uh, World of War <coughs> Flames of War. So what's inside that box? So we'll start with the card. There's one card in it. We'll look at it. Okay, so they tell you our Ornis tank hunter platoon and the motivation, the open counter attack, the skill, the open gun assault level. Careful is it on front armor two side one top zero. Anyway, good mobility. The Ornis his range is 48 inches or 120 centimeters. Two shot when it start, it stop. One when it's moving. It's a 17 and tank, so the front is two. For example, that's 17, so it pretty go through almost anything. And firepower is three plus. There's also a mission gun on it, 16 inches, three, two, and the end tank is a two, and firepower is a six. So pretty much the stat for the Ornis. In the back they tell you, two Ornis is 14 points, three Ornis is 21 points, 4 on this is 24 point. Forward firing, weapon can only hit target in front of the team. Some unit may attempt a second different movement order after succeeding in his first movement order. So he's a stormtrooper. So that's pretty much what the Ornis capability in the game. But if you want just to build it as a modeler, and uh, more than just for the game, we'll see what we got here. So pretty straightforward we got two frame they are metal frame that's pretty much a lead you got the track for both sides as you can see on the side of it I don't know if you can see it but uh, let's see if we can get closer there's an arrow so we know that's the front this one is the front right here so they fit like that it's my R on it that's marked the left no, no uh, maybe yes I see the left side so we know it's a left and right so they go on both sides of the vehicle just like that and you need super glue to put it together because of uh, it's a metal so quickly we go through so that's one that's the second one track we got the gun because it's metal it look pretty crappy that's straight will never be straight so the two gun for the tank so that's pretty much how it goes this way in front of each other's then you have to look a bit more that looked like is a tripod there's a machine gun for it the machine gun go on the side of it like right like this so you got your two gun I think that's a three part that's one part that's the second part 
or put it, but I will put one together, we'll see. Here's one guy sitting. The commander and the loader. So there's three guys for that. Two machine gun. So next step is to build one to put together. We'll do that and we'll talk about what's next. So let's put one together. So let's build the ornaments. First, what I'm going to put is uh, the site that you can find on the side. You're going to see there's that kind of a groove there. It will fit perfectly on the left side right here inside. So what you have to do is uh, put some super glue, glue them together right there and then let it dry. So we're going to put a bit, of, a bit of super glue there for good measure, not too much. Otherwise, it take forever to glue. Then you install it there. Then you let it dry. So I'm gonna just try to install it. it stick there enough, long enough by itself. And we'll do the next one. That's a problem with super glue and cheap metal. really not too practical, not too good, not too impress. It's one thing about uh, that kind of game, more I play, I just starting to play not long ago, is they make a lot of money because it's cheap project, even plastic, as much as you can think it's cheap, it's better than that. It might make you wonder how they were able to to get that game going long enough. Okay, so we get the gun. Let's put the track. Again, just a bit of glue, not too much. If you put too much, it takes longer to dry. So we we'll just have to That's one side done. Let's do the same on the other side. And you're gonna see, even with super glue like that, you think you're good, then you look at it and it fell apart. So that's the track on one install. I'll try to install the track on the other one. So not too much, enough to glue and not too much so it takes forever to dry. That's a tricky combination to achieve. I will not glue the crew inside. I will wait until it's, it's completely paint. So let's see that's is dry enough to put the gun you put glue on the 
attachment then you can take one of the gun and you can see that goes on the left side and you get two little holding pin there and you sit the gun on it and while that is drying you may try to install that on the gun so though the so that goes on the edge and the gun sit on it just like that but again kind of tricky there we go and what looked like I'm afraid if I move it, it will get off again. It was not centered, so I tried to center it. I think that's why you can get away with using lead as a material instead of plastic. Definitely not for kid. First of all, it's because it's poor quality lead, you can, if you move it a bit too much, it's going to break. Okay, seems about right. Let's put some more glue on it. And we'll let it dry like that. So my next video will, not my next video, but the next, I will not put the machine gun, I will not glue the machine gun, I don't glue the soldier yet. I'm gonna do is uh, put them together the second one like this one and then we I gotta show you how I paint mine I know that uh, most people uh, you can check on YouTube are excellent painter if you're not like me that as as a good painter as I am then uh, here's a I'll show you a trick I do to make a three color paint that look pretty good using only the airbrush for that so let's start get ready for painting so the first step is completed as you can see 
uh, it's interested gray, but you can see there's still some metal part, so it's not completely paint. What was important for me was to be able to paint the entire frame where the next color would be. That means I'm going to use olive gray onto the vehicle. Here it will be dark yellow completely. So even if there's no more paint until dark yellow, I'm fine with that. But right now, my con concentration or my aim is the outside, not the inside. The outside, the outside of the gun, underneath and on the side, would be paint olive gray on both vehicles. That's the first step for a three color. The green, the brown, and the dark yellow to be completed. Because dark yellow is the main color at the end, it's really, it's less a problem if it does not paint here of any other color, because my attention would be only for the dark yellow in this part. There's no two, three color on that except dark yellow. For the back, you can see I pay attention, I pay attention to the front. Everything would be paid attention for the green and the brown according to the pattern I want to create. It goes the same for the cannon itself. So I'll paint them green, then we'll come back. There we go, I just finished to paint it green, like I said. So here it is. Now my next step before I paint uh, the brown, mud brown color on it is to dot the vehicle. As you can see on the top corner, I put the pictures of what I will try to achieve. It's important to understand that regardless what you do, how you do it, it's always right because the German army doesn't have a pattern for any kind of vehicle. So it is pretty much the pattern that the driver or the crew decide to put on his vehicle with the color available. There's a two colors, the green and the brown, and the vehicle obviously arrived dark yellow to the combat zone. So what I'm gonna do is use this adhesive body. I bought that at Staples in Canada. <clears throat> it's really cheap and uh, it's a reu re reusable acid-free non-toxic putty. So basically what you do is uh, you warm it up. As it warm up, it become more flexible but also more sticky. So that's what you want, that to be sticky. And now because I want to achieve a dot pattern on it, I just need a little bit of putty, really little bit one. You can do also, if you make it like a stripe line on it, you can make like a line on it that looks like this. And when you paint it the other color, that would be a green line. But my aim today is not to have line, but to have a little dot of green a bit everywhere on the vehicle. So I just take a little bit of it and I put it a bit every, and I put it everywhere. So I put one here. So when I paint that will spot will stay green. And then I put another one here. And and so on. So that's the idea. So what I will do now, I was trying to stay stop to say so is do the pattern on it. Show you just before I start to paint. And then we're gonna paint it let it dry and then we'll be able to put uh, the brown paint on it. So I'm going to do both vehicles like that with spotted on it. I'll give you that just to give you an idea. I would probably make the spot a bit smaller than those one, but that's the aim of it. So see you in a few minutes. I'll do that. So now I finished to paint the, brown, uh, the green colored on it. Uh, my next step would be to put Camo medium brown on it. So in the, in the comments below, I will put a 71038 by Vallejo hair model camo medium brown. So I'm gonna spray all the frame of the vehicle, not that much where the track are because it's gonna be only dark yellow. And when it's all brown paint, camo brown paint in it, not necessarily the inside because it's gonna be the entire dark yellow. We're gonna dot some ground spot on it and then put the dark yellow. So 
the, the, the thing I had of myself. And like uh, you show on the example on the top corner, uh, what I'm aiming for or what looked like, uh, where that step with the green is done, there's a few brown spot on it. So we're going to put the brown spot on it by painting the entire vehicle brown. And then we're going to dot it, like I said, with those tack. So let's paint it. Now that I just finished to paint the camel brown under or nice, it's time to prepare for the last phase that would be the dark yellow. So this time we're going to put some dot to cover the brown. So when I put the dark yellow and it would be dry, I can remove all those dot made by that sticky stuff to put on the wall for poster and so on and to remove it. And then we should have a nice pattern of dot green, dot brown with a kind of background dark yellow for the entire vehicle. I know that I don't show any video about uh, while I'm painting it. Uh, the reason for that is the compressor is pretty noisy and it makes noise quite often. So I pass on that. So the idea is to be on the same. I just take a little bit of that tack. what happened when the when I, one end is using something and the other others and I put it where I think it should be and as the picture I show you in the corner there's a lot less brown than green so don't be surprised I put a lot less uh, brown spot to be so but I'm gonna just do a few here so you got the idea just put a blob a bit everywhere and put the last one there and the blob is whatever you want to be in size so if you want bigger bigger is up to you but the principle is the same if you decide to do 135 scale model or like this one for flame of war it's one 100 or 15 mil uh, it should be the same the same principle so i got a couple love here to get the idea also inside would be completely dark yellow paint and then we can do the weathering after that so you got the idea here the good thing is we have two vehicle so i can show you one done and ready to paint so here's what it looked like when it's going to be ready to paint not many brown spots would be left but should be enough to get the idea a bit like on the pictures in the corner. So I'm going to continue that, get ready to paint dark yellow, paint it dark yellow, and then let it dry. And then the next part would be removing those dots and see the end project of it before weathering. It's been a long video so far. This is my last segment. So we'll talk about the pattern on it as you can see i tried to use something we saw feel free not to uh, achieve your pattern as you can see on the pictures or or don't feel bad about it because every pattern is different from one vehicle to another every pattern is different from one unit to another unit the reason for that is they don't arrive to the battlefield already paint from factory they arrive painting dark yellow only and they paint the color as needed by the unit or with paint available to the unit. When the unit received the paint, they received green or brown in a bucket of 20 kilo. It's a paste, so you cannot just apply it to the vehicle. You have to mix that paste with water or with gasoline. If you use water, more than likely the paint at the first rain will all disappear because it's water based and water will just return the water uh, the paint to the ground and to use gasoline that was the commodity that the german army cannot really afford is paint vehicle with gas when they don't have enough gas to run their vehicle so quite often they don't use any any paint 
on their vehicle. So most of the time during the war, when you see dark yellow, it's pretty much dark yellow all the way to the end. The reason for that is they cannot afford another color to it or they don't have that color because it's more important to bring gas and equipment than to bring paint. The pattern used, like I said, is depending of the unit, where they are, and the seal. So whatever color you use, the paint and the, the camouflage you decide to put on the vehicle, it's up to you and it would be valid. It's because it is done by unit level, by drivers. So in the same unit, in the same troops, four vehicle, they will have four different paint because of how the driver feel or the crew feel to paint their vehicle. Now the green or the brown, the shade of it or the color is depending if you use water and you, or you use gas and also depend how much you put in the mix. And the third, another reason why the color may change is when you open the 20 kilo, the color is one, but when you arrive near the end of the 20 kilo of pace, the color will change because uh, if it's been sitting for a long time, there will be more pigment at the bottom than on top of the 20 kilo paste. So your green you use or your mud you use, the color it is, is depending on you and you will not be wrong either because of that. In the description below, I will show you what I use to paint. So what color, what paint, what color, from which co company and also when I did the weathering what did I use to do weathering of that vehicle so that completes this video so that way when you see another video of a vehicle I will not show you all I paint because the technique is pretty much all the same if I paint a two color I would put the first color in like the green or the mud uh, brown first I'm gonna use that adhesive putty to mark where I want that paint to be on and then I paint the dark yellow so that way airbrushing because I'm not really good at airbrushing it achieve an effect that is pretty good using only airbrushing without using painting the vehicle with a brush so I hope you enjoyed this video uh, feel free to comment on it and have a nice time have fun playing flames of war if you play flames of war if you do modeling have fun do your model thank you for watching see you soon